The relentless assault on Syrian cities claimed dozens of lives today, including two well-known Western journalists. In the besieged neighborhoods of Homs, the explosions came every few seconds. Listen. At least 20 people died there, among them the legendary American war correspondent Marie Colvin and the French photographer Remy O'Clique. They died in an apparent mortar strike on a house in the Baba Amr neighborhood used as an opposition media center. The rubble seen here is the aftermath of that attack. Only last night, Marie Colvin told our own Anderson Cooper that the Syrian regime is ruthlessly targeting civilians. Every civilian house on the street has been hit. We're talking about, you know, this is a very kind of poor, popular neighborhood. The top floor of the building I'm in has been hit. Um, in fact, totally destroyed. There are no military targets here. It's a complete and utter lie that they are only going after terrorists. There are rockets shell tank shells um anti-aircraft being fired in a parallel line into the city the syrian army is simply shelling a city of cold starving civilians marie colvin worked for britain sunday times as she'd covered conflicts all over the world she lost an eye a decade ago while on assignment in sri lanka Remy Oklika had been everywhere from Haiti to Libya, won an award for his work last year covering Libya's revolution. Tonight in Homs in Syria, residents rallied in memory of the two journalists. They held up this sign and they called on Arab leaders not to forget that their embattled city. CNN's Arwa Damon was in Homs last week and was in the very same communication center where these two journalists died. She filed this report. It hit us. It hit our house. There is something burning. The voice on the tape cries out. The media house in Baba Ahmed has been hit. Get off the live camera, someone shouts. They have discovered our position. But nothing, they swear, will shut them down. We survey the damage. To get to the upper floors, you really have to hug the wall because there's one window that's exposed. But this is where you really see the full impact of the damage that was caused by the incoming rounds. I mean, this right here, it just speaks for itself. It's not the first time this house has been hit. This floor has obviously been completely trashed, and the activists were telling us that the bombardment, and keep hearing it over and over again, the sounds of artillery falling, is nothing compared to what they've been through before. But this was once an ordinary home, an ordinary family lived here, and we don't know what their story was. There's just bits and pieces of their lives that have been left behind, including this children's toy. Now this battered home is the opposition's media hub, buzzing with activity. Some of the activists don't want their identities revealed. They are all wanted men, most in their 20s. Many of those homes videos you see on YouTube are uploaded from here. In the face of great danger, teams go out to shoot videos like this one. Others post images to Facebook and other social media sites. One of the biggest accomplishments for the media team here was getting up a live stream so that they could show the world exactly what was happening in real time. And they believed that this really aggravated the Syrian government. Now, this is one of the live cameras that they had set up outside. And they're telling us that it was shot by a sniper's bullet that went in right there and then came out the other end. But even though the government managed to bring down this live feed, they still had other cameras set up, still managed to get the images and the message out. And Arwa Damon is joining us now. Uh, Arwa, a very, very sad story. Uh, also, you were just there a few days ago, and, and you saw Marie uh, Colvin on the scene in that very same location where she was killed. First of all, tell us a little bit about your experiences with her. 
Well, you know, Murray's the kind of journalist who so many others in the industry really strives to be. She embodies the essence of what it is that we do and why it is that we do it. She had this fierce passion for the story, a determination to shed light on various atrocities, no matter what the cost. At the time when we left Syria, she actually had left Baba Ahmed with us. The activists believed that a strike by Syrian forces, a ground strike, was going to be imminent. She, of course, then stayed behind and went, went back into Baba Ahmed because she believed that deeply, that what the regime was doing to its own people had to be uncovered. This is a woman who has been to every single war zone that you could possibly imagine, and still she was talking about how this was one of the worst things that she had ever witnessed, which just goes to show you what is actually taking place there. And it goes to show you how indiscriminate this shelling is, that our industry has tragically lost yet another voice determined to keep telling the story of civilians caught in the crossfire. Uh, be, beyond being caught in the crossfire, is there any evidence that the Syrian authorities are actually targeting Western journalists like yourself? Not necessarily that they're targeting Western journalists, but that particular location, the media house, as we call it, where that you saw in that story and where Marie and the French photographer Remy were killed, that has been a target by the Syrian government. The activists for uh, quite some time had a live stream being broadcast from there, and they believe that the Syrian government is really determined to try to do whatever it can to stop those YouTube videos from coming out, to stop activists in areas that are under siege from speaking, so they really do believe that they themselves are in the crosshairs of the Syrian government. Arwa Damon, one of our own uh, courageous journalists. Uh, thanks, Arwa. Let's get back to this hour's big story, too. Very courageous journalists killed in home Syria. One of them, the French photographer Remy O'Clique, the other, the American reporter Marie uh, Colvin, who wrote for the Times of London and whose family lives in New York. Our Mary Snow is joining us now with more. Mary, what did you find out? Well, Wolf, Marie's mother, Rosemary Colvin, is speaking out, she says, to make sure her daughter's legacy lives on. She says she suspected Marie was in Syria because she hadn't heard from her in two weeks, and she watched her daughter's report on CNN last night, a report that contains images that are disturbing but show the reality of what is happening. Just hours after veteran journalist Marie Colvin was killed in Syria, her mother, Rosemary, did what she says her daughter would have wanted. She opened her Long Island home to reporters instead of hiding in grief. She died doing what was really, really important to her. She said she needed one more day to finish the story. It was a big story and she needed one more day and she would come out today. That story for the Sunday Times of London was about civilians being killed in home Syria. Just hours before her death, Colvin told CNN's Anderson Cooper about watching a two-year-old boy die of a shrapnel wound. And she wanted the world to see this conflict up close, just as she did. I think it's actually stronger for an audience, um, that, you know, for someone who's not here, for an audience um, for which uh, the, the conflict, any conflict, is very far away. But that's the reality. This is, these are 28,000 civilians, men, women, and children, hiding, being shelled, defenseless. Colvin called Syria's claim that it's only targeting terrorist gangs a lie, saying every civilian house where she was had been hit by shelling. Exposing the truth, say family members, is what drove her, and that meant covering some of the world's most dangerous hotspots. She had worn an eye patch since losing her eye when covering the conflict in Sri Lanka in 2001. Marie's mother says she never asked her daughter whether working in war zones was worth the risk. I've never said that because it would have been the most useless conversation you could ever have had with my daughter. Uh, from the time she was a little child, she was committed to doing things that were important. Rosemary Colvin says as a teenager, Marie took part in civil rights protests, studied abroad, and even talked her way into letting Yale allow her to file an application when she missed the enrollment deadline. I'm going to miss her so much. And I just hope we can bring her home one more time. Doesn't look good. Rosemary Colvin is worried about retrieving her daughter's body. Now, the French Foreign Ministry is demanding that Syria allow the Red Cross to retrieve the bodies of Marie Colvin and Remy Oklik, the French photographer, also killed in that shelling. Wolf?
What a sad, sad story, Mary. Thanks very much. Uh, Marie Colvin was certainly one of the best war correspondents of our generation. I spoke to her last spring at a time of rather bitter, intense fighting between Muammar Gaddafi's army and the Libyan rebels. We know a lot of journalists have been detained. Uh, some have been killed. Marie, you're one of the most courageous journalists on the scene right now. Give us a little flavor what it's like to try to cover this war in Misrata. Well, I think one of my worst moments was last night. I was out in an ambulance, and um, one of these missiles landed so close, the ambulance sort of leapt two feet into the air. Um, I later found I was uh, seeing you know, casualties being brought in, and there was my ambulance driver who dropped me off 15 minutes earlier. He was lying on a gurney injured. I just can't describe the, the amount of injuries. Would you say this is the most dangerous environment you've covered over the years? Uh, and I've watched and, cover, uh, and seen your reporting over the years. Uh, uh, how would you rate what's going on in Misrata right now? I think this is by, well, I wouldn't say both quite, because Chechnya was pretty bad, but it's the most dangerous environment, and part of that is because it's largely because it's so unpredictable. The front has changed building by building the entire time I've been here. Uh, and when I say front, we're, we're talking about, um, you know, the rebels who two months ago hadn't even seen a gun, so they're unpredictable. And, and, and remember, you know, much as Libya is, is kind of a, part of darkness to a lot of us Americans, Libyans haven't actually ever been in a war. So they don't know what they're doing when they're fighting. Sad day for all of us. Uh, we'll always remember Marie Colvin as a very courageous journalist.